Instant Monsters presents Foam Latex Application. Part 2. Painting. In part one of this tutorial, I showed you how to apply a foam latex prosthetic. Now we'll complete the makeup by adding color. Here are the materials you'll need to paint your prosthetic. Rubber mask grease paint or PAX paint. PAX is a 50-50 mixture of acrylic paint and acrylic prosthetic adhesive, while rubber mask grease paint is a thick cream foundation. If you can't find it, you can make your own by mixing a few drops of castor oil into regular cream foundation. Makeup sponges. Makeup brushes and a spatula. A mixing palette. Color-free powder and a powder puff. Alcohol activated makeup. 99% alcohol. Don't use 70% or 91%, which are the two most common types of rubbing alcohol. These won't dissolve the makeup completely, and you'll end up with little chunks of undissolved pigment while you're trying to work. Finally, you'll need a few cheap paint brushes with the bristles cut short. Optional items are prosthetic adhesive, crepe wool, a comb, and a small pair of scissors. To prepare for coloring, tear chunks off the ends of several makeup sponges. This will create texture and eliminate the straight edges along the sides of the sponges. Begin with some rubber mask grease paint or PAX paint on a mixing palette. Your first layer should be a sunburn red color applied to the entire prosthetic and feathered out onto the surrounding skin. This color is used first because it helps to simulate the blood and muscle that are under the skin. Since foam latex is essentially a white sponge, without this red layer, your final makeup may look dull, even grayish. Powder the first layer of color. If you're using rubber mask grease paint, you'll want to powder it heavily to set the makeup. With PAX, the powder is just to eliminate any stickiness from the adhesive. Dust away the excess with a powder brush, then apply a skin tone that's close to your own color. If in doubt with the skin color, go a shade lighter than your own. It's much easier to darken your face with more makeup than to try and pull it back if you start too dark to begin with. At this stage, the makeup was looking a little pinker than I wanted, so I added a second layer of flesh-toned packs. Once the foundation color is in place, powder again. For Mike's eyes and the surrounding skin, I'm going to use a matching cream foundation, which is much easier on his skin. Scoop some out onto your mixing palette, then work off of that to keep the main container of foundation free from dirt and other contaminants. One final powdering and you're ready for alcohol makeup. Right now the prosthetic is one solid color. That might work well enough for a dark haunted house or a Halloween party, but it's going to look fake under any kind of close-up inspection. Look closely at your own skin. You'll see that it's not just one solid color, but a mixture of different colors all jumbled together. You're going to recreate this variation by using a few different alcohol colors to add some modeling and freckling to the makeup. One of the great things about alcohol-activated makeup is that you can use it either as a thick paint or as a thin wash, almost like watercolors, depending on how much alcohol you use. Start with a thin wash of a shadow color to emphasize any wrinkles in the prosthetic. You want to do this step first because most of it will be covered up in the next several layers, resulting in a natural looking shadow rather than lines painted on your face. Now it's time to use a technique called spattering. Thin down a pinkish color with a lot of 99% alcohol to create a wash, then load up your cut down chip brush. Using your fingers, flick droplets of color onto your face. The effect is going to be very subtle, but it'll start to warm up the makeup and add a little bit of life to it. Here's a demonstration of spattering on a white canvas using a bright red to show more clearly the result of the spattering. This is much heavier than you want to do for your makeup. You should only be working in thin washes on your face. It'll take several built-up layers to begin looking like natural skin tone. Usually, I like to aim the first flick or two away from the actor to avoid the big splatters of color you see here. If that accidentally happens on your skin, you can quickly tap at the large blobs with your finger to soften them away before they dry. 
Once you've finished with the pinkish color, you're going to spatter a few thin washes of flesh tone makeup, some lighter and some darker than your skin tone. If your foundation isn't a perfect match to your skin, this is where you can adjust it by using more or less of the lighter or darker tones. The effect of all these layers of spatter will be subtle, but they'll help your makeup to look much more like real skin when viewed up close. You can also spatter more of the shadow onto your temples, in your eye sockets, under your cheekbones, and anywhere else that you want to emphasize the deeper areas in the makeup. Here, I'm using a brush with that shadow color to emphasize the contours of Mike's neck. This will help to make his neck match the old face a little better. With a makeup like this, taking some time to research photos of what you're trying to recreate can be very helpful. Despite the contouring I added, Mike's neck is still looking a little flat compared to all of that spattered texture on the face. So I went back in and added a few layers of spatter to the neck to tie everything together. Here's a side-by-side -side view of the makeup with just the solid foundation on the left and after all that spattering on the right. All of those subtle washes of color add up to something pretty realistic. Here I'm adding some age spots with a darker brown alcohol color. These tend to live in the temples, the shadows of the cheek, and the neck mainly, but they can appear anywhere on the face or head. Again, doing some research beforehand can help your makeup look more realistic. I'm also going in with the same color and very delicately re-emphasizing any wrinkles that have gotten too covered up by all the spattering. Use a cream makeup to color your lips. Avoid anything too red or too pink. The lips usually lose a lot of their natural color with age. Originally I was planning to just do Mike's face for this makeup, but I decided to extend the spattered texture over his whole head. It's pretty easy to add spatter to new areas like this. Just work in the same color order that you did on the face. A few more age spots further back on the head finished tying everything together. The final step is going to be adding eyebrows. This is optional depending on your prosthetic, but in this case I wanted to see some. Paint a line of prosthetic adhesive onto the eyebrow area, then add small amounts of crepe wool onto the dry yet sticky adhesive. Start from the outside and work your way in. Each layer should overlap the one before. Since these are old man eyebrows, I don't mind them being a little thick and crazy. Once the brow was finished, I pulled out any loose hair and gave them a quick trim with a small pair of scissors. And just like that, Mike has aged decades. In part three of this tutorial, I'll show you how to safely remove your prosthetic at the end of the day.